called anti-hemorrhage tincture from Herblore. It's online, or Herblore, and I just buy a whole bunch of those. Also, they have a uh, one they call placenta out, or placenta release. And I buy that too, and I always have those ready. And I might give her two dropperfuls of each. Um, is this orally? Or orally, just, you just put it under their tongue. I mean, it's nasty, nasty. <laughs> But you put it, you just squirt it under their tongue, um, and uh, and that's my first line thing that I do. Um, the they both are they're both blends. They contain Shepherd's Purse. Uh, one of them contains Angelica, which is really good for placental release. Um, so what about Hilly mother Chrissom? Huh? Somebody asked about Hilly Chrissom. How are you administering it? Just under, one under the tongue. I haven't tried it, but maybe somebody has. I've heard that one can be can be effective. What is so it they were talking helichrysum, like, like, right? Yeah, just like water drop. That's right. the kind that you that you can take orally. Like. There are also some homeopathics. I'm going to change the subject. It's all right. Could you expand a little bit more on earlier? I don't know if you were here. They were talking about them leaving the umbilical cord Attack. on mm -hmm. for quite some period of time. No, to so spur. tell me My how favorite. that. So here we've got the placenta that's been delivered, the umbilical cord in the baby. Tell me. So this is an old pioneer method that works just great if you don't have, well, I mean, you know, assuming you don't have wolves following you who might scent the blood. Okay, but um, <laughs> you'll notice that, uh, so, so this has become popular in particularly hippie circles now is to do a lotus birth where you never clamp and cut. But it was an old pioneer method because if you didn't have something sterile to cut that cord with, you can kill the baby through infection. So there's nothing that says you can't just leave that cord attached. You can just carry the placenta around. I mean, if you're doing it the hippie way, you've got a special colander full of herbs that you're going to, you know, let it drain into a bowl for a day or two, and then you'll just pack it in a special, they usually make little special bags filled with herbs that they're going to carry it around in. But very honestly, I've, I've done this for a couple of moms, and um, very honestly, I go back 24 hours later, and you can just break that thing off because it's so stiff, and, and uh, you know, you wait long enough, it'll just... The you cord will come off the placenta, is that what you're no, saying? No, the cord will come off the baby, just, you know how the baby... Right, the but there won't even be a stub? Right, it would, it'll just fall oh, off. Really? Just okay. Because it doesn't make any difference if you had clamped and cut this far out, right. it would still fall off in a few okay. days. But in this case, you can just wait till the next day and just break it. You know, or you can cut it. But if you're going to cut it, you better have something sterile. And and I would wait. I wouldn't even try tying it off if you're going to cut it. Wait two three hours till there's absolutely no blood flow through that placenta and it will have stopped, and then you can just cut it. You just don't want to cut it without tying it off while there's still pulsing going on, because the baby will bleed out, okay? So you don't want to have that happen. So you just wait long enough, it'll take care of itself. Um, I don't know. They also mentioned something about the length of it. Is that? So the cords vary a lot in lengths. <laughs> some, some cords are long enough that that baby can be tangled every which way with the cord all wrapped up four times, you know? I've seen those. And some babies, the cord is so short that you can barely get the baby up to the mom's belly and the baby can't nurse, okay, because you can't, because the cord is so short. By the way, that's happening more and more frequently now. We don't know if it's because of the processed foods in the diets or whether it's environmental things Chemos. such as uh, chemicals and stuff like that in the plastics that are all full our, around our environment. Um, and remember, the baby's the top of the food chain. Just think about that a little bit. That, what that means is that all pollutants and everything are more concentrated in the baby than they are anywhere else. Um, so, and the mother's breast milk, which every mother is positive for BPA in the breast milk now, but it's still better to breastfeed. Anyway, um, so we are having short cords. So you may have to clamp and cut just so the baby can breastfeed. So you have a couple options, um, but you don't really need to because the placenta has come out. See. Right. So once the placenta comes out, you just wrap it up. It doesn't matter how long the cord is, right? Baby can breastfeed. The only time that becomes an issue is like it's an hour after the birth and we still don't have a placenta, which is okay as long as mom's not bleeding and not, you know, starting to lose consciousness from loss of blood and that kind of thing. Some placentas are just delayed. I've seen it be four hours. I don't want to ever see it. Can the baby go that long without eating? Well, in, in the one that I saw going four hours, 
the big, it was a long enough chord, so we didn't have that issue. So that's what I'm saying. If you had a really short chord and the placenta was really delayed, then you might consider clamping and cutting, in which case just make sure everything's really sterile. That means boiling it for 20 minutes or running it through a flame, and I'd use a sharp um, a new razor blade if possible or something else sharp. It's tough. You have to saw through that cord. The other thing you can do is burn through it with a candle. So you would just protect the baby with some foil or something like that, and you just burn through about this far out from the baby. It takes about 15 minutes. Just hold the candle under it, chant, or sing, or mm -hmm. <laughs> I've seen a lot of stuff. <laughs> we serve a diverse population. So, um, and then uh, it's going to smell bad. That's okay. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's really sterile. It's a good way to do it. So it cauterizes. Yeah, it cauterizes. Yeah. cauterizes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Well, it's really sterile. So that might be your best bet. Okay, I'm, I'm confused at which way, where, where do you cut? Okay, so where do you tie off, where do you cut? Okay, so I like to leave them a little long because I think they dry up faster and fall off faster. That's been my experience. So here's the cord coming out from the baby, okay? Oh, that far out from the baby, okay? So you got that much cord on there, all right? Tie it off and cut on the other side, obviously. <laughs> you don't want to cut on the baby side. Now, in hospital settings, you'll see it done differently. You'll see that they'll clamp in two places. They'll clamp sometimes right close to the baby. Mm -hmm. I don't like to do that for a variety of reasons, but okay, whatever, style. The, the blood flow that you said, they get like 30 or 40 percent more blood. Yeah, but let's assume that you've got a a, a, a progressive hospital where they know that they should leave it for a while, but then they're only going to leave it three minutes max, okay? Mm -hmm. I have actually seen doctors leave it longer, but usually three minutes max. And then they're going to clamp, and then they're going to clamp again here. And for the second one, they might use like one of those forcep clamps, okay? They're going to clamp here, and they're going to cut between them. The reason they're clamping on this side, they call it the maternal side, is that otherwise it's messy when you cut it. You got all that blood coming out of the placenta and it's just messy. So that's just to prevent mess. But if you waited till the placenta was out, it's not a big issue. Because you okay. want that blood, you say, to go to yeah. the baby. Yeah, you want all that blood to go to the baby, and that's good. I mean, placentas are messy regardless of what you do. It's they're kind of bloody and messy. But you'll know that you're really ready to do this when you can inspect the placenta for completeness with one hand and eat a cracker with the other. <laughs> <laughs> but, and, you, and, it, and it stops pulsing. Yeah, once it stopped pulsing, you can cut it. But it will pulse, so it'll be pulsing all along the length when the baby's first born, and the pulsing will gradually get, so it's only pulsing right up next to the baby. That'll be the last place it stops pulsing. Yeah. briefly cover a breach? That'll be brief. Okay, I'm going to pause this.